Hello everyone, it gives me great pleasure to present some of my work, which is the biomechanical implications of the batting backlift technique in cricket. And I'll be presenting to you a collation of the current evidence on this topic. So it's firstly important to understand the factors for successful cricket batting. And uh, just to look at some of the technical components of a batsman, the stance, the grip, the backlift, and the downswing, as well as the impact and follow through. And uh, this is all in conjunction with different areas within cricket to talk about performance, coaching, biomechanics in motor control, medicine and nutrition, psychology and morphology, and fitness and conditioning, as well as vision and skill acquisition. So the purpose of this presentation has a specific lens and focus on the backlift technique in cricket. And um, my presentation will be more fo focused towards uh, the backlift, which has implication for performance, biomechanics, coaching, motor control, as well as skill acquisition. So there's two types of backlift techniques in my research that we found. One is a straight backlift technique where the backlift is directed towards the wicket keeper or at times with an open face of the bat. It, it, that would be a latch backlift, but it usually has a closed face of the bat with the, if it's a straight backlift technique. If it's a lateral backlift, it's a, a bat which is more directed beyond second slip or towards gully and point or the face of the bat is open. In this scenario, we have Stephen Smith, uh, which has also portrayed a, a lateral batting back technique. So one of the first studies we conducted was a descriptive analysis of batting backlift techniques in cricket. And we want to answer a question, does the practice of elite cricketers follow the theory? So we found that more than 70% of the greatest batsmen of all time did not adopt the traditionally taught straight batting backlift technique. Instead, they adopted a more looped action in which the movement of the bat at the moment the bowler released the ball was in the direction of second slip, or in most cases, the face of the bat was towards point. So these are some of the pictures that and the videos that we had looked at. Um, as well, you can see that some of the angles of the, of the, ba of the batsman are not directly behind the bowler. And this is because these pictures were taken before the 1940s. And, um, and then as we go on, some of these pictures were taken more towards the, the, the 21st century. So we had used, um, we had had a, um, an iterated in order to reduce perspective error to verify that the classifications of the backlog were in fact correct. And then we also looked at some IPL batsmen, and we found that out of those 30 uh, batsmen, 90% of those batsmen had a lateral backlift. And these are some of the pictures of the IPL batsmen from the 2016 season that we had analyzed. So there was other studies that we had looked at, and the methodology of these studies is that it was largely an observational study by looking at videos that were either uh, obtained from, from YouTube videos or online archives, or these videos were actually captured with cricketers that we had analyzed. And then we used Canovia in order to analyze uh, the backlift in both the frontal and the transverse plane. Most of the data we're showing in this presentation was actually only obtained in the frontal plane. And then we looked at the stats of these plays between, 19, uh, between 1895 and 2014 uh, using the, the Crick Info website. And then we also used the different classifications of the backlift. And we had different defining criteria for each of the batsmen that we had analyzed. And then data analysis was also then performed. So the first question that we want to look at was, um, is it a contributing factor to success for professional cricket players, for, crucial, for professional cricket players playing at the highest level? And uh, the, this particular study, we looked at three variables, the direction of the backlift, we looked at the stance or the footwork of the batsman, and we also looked at the wagon wheels of batsmen as well. So from a South African sample, we looked at all the provincial and franchise cricketers, and um, this came to about 118. And then we also looked at 25 county cricketers in uh, 2016, which came from Durham, Middlesex and Surrey. And then we also looked at 12 international cricketers from South Africa. In terms of data analysis, we performed a, a Pearson's chi-square test, which was performed to determine where the percentages of batsmen using a lateral backlift differed between the levels of professional cricket. The student's t-test was used to compare higher scores, career runs scored, career averages, and strike rates between batsmen with a lateral backlift and straight uh, backlift, respectively, at county professional and South African international levels. 
all analyses were performed using R at a significant level of 0.05. So in this study specifically, we found that 38% of semi-professional and 39% of professional players use the lateral backflip respectively. And there were 40% of county professional and 75% of South African international players who use the lateral backflip respectively. When we look at the wagon wheels and the stance, the study found that batsmen who used the lateral backlift were more proficient at scoring runs in various areas around the cricket field, according to the wagon wheel analysis. A lateral backlift was shown to positively affect the stance and footwork of batsmen, whereby most batsmen had an open stance at the crease. And then he moved on to our last objective, which was to uh, analyze the batting backlift techniques among trained and untrained cricket batsmen, specifically cricketers within the youth category. So those who are untrained, these are cricketers who have never picked up a bat before. They played a form of Calypso cricket in the townships. We found that 30% of them who were not coached had a lateral backlift. Uh, sorry, not 30%, 75% of them had a lateral backlift, where the other 25% had a straight backlift. So these are some of the pictures that you can see from these untrained cricketers. You can see that their technique is all over the show, which means that they had not received formalized coaching within South Africa. And then to look at adolescent trained cricketers, it's on the other side of the spectrum. 71% had a straight backlift and um, the, the rest had a, a lateral backlift. And then just to show some pictures of these trained cricketers, we can see that all of them have a lateral backlift except for 3.21 and 3.24. And then we also looked at amateur trained cricketers. So these guys played semi-professional cricket and we found that only two of them had actually displayed a lateral backlift. And interestingly, from those who had a lateral backlift, they had the highest averages in both three-day and one-day cricket respectively, as you can see over there. And these are some of the pictures of them as well. All right, and then to do a four-way comparison, because Sir Donald Bradman has inspired the vision of this study six years ago, we had a four-way comparison with himself, a untrained cricketer, a coach cricketer as well as a semi-professional cricketer and we can see that an untrained cricketer has a similar backlift towards Bradman even though this image is taken from a slight angle which skews the veracity of this finding however we see that these two cricketers still have a, a largely a straight backlift um, in their technique so we found a trend and the trend is that there's a lat the lateral backlift has a trend across different levels so we can see that from the adolescent level, we have a low amount of uh, batsmen who use a lateral backlift compared to the international level, where we have a high incidence of those batters who are using a lateral backlift. So as the cricketers um, advance to the different stages within the cricket career, uh, batters who use a lateral backlift become a lot more prominent. And then we wanted to understand the lateral backlift across different formats. Um, in the T20 format, it is a lot more common compared to the ODIs. And with the test cricket, it is less common. And that's because lateral backlift has been shown to be um, more aggressive in nature, where straight backlift would be more a good action for a defensive shot. So here we can see that there's a 5% difference between those batsmen who used a lateral backlift in between test cricket or ODI cricket. And then the gap is even wider between ODI cricket and T20 cricket. So from this study, we've also developed a conceptualized body segment model for a batting technique where we can't just look at the back lift in isolation. There are other components, there are other factors that need to be considered. And this kind of study has implications for coaches, not just cricketers or scientists or biomechanists, to take heed when you are considering a backlift with uh, both men and female cricketers. So some of the segments that we have to look at is the head, uh, the stability of the head, the direction of the backlift, uh, whether the shoulders are open and closed, whether the hips are open and closed, and whether the face of the bat is open and closed. We also need to do further studies on the grip in association with the batting technique, as well as the footwork, as well as the back leg. So thank you very much um, for listening to my presentation and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have on my email address habibn at uj.ac.za. Thank you.